Continuing the series on hydraulic actuators, let's take a look at a really common design for a steering cylinder. So we're looking at a double acting, and in this case, a double acting differential. In other words, we have two different surface areas. One surface area on the major surface area on one side of the piston, and then what's called the annular surface area, where it's a less surface area on the piston because of the area reduced by the size of the cylinder itself. So we see a greater surface area on this side and a lesser surface area on this side. Equal pressure sent to the cylinder, more force will be created and extend than we will see retract. In this case, we see that it is a double acting cylinder and we know that it is a double acting cylinder because we are able to see that there are two work ports right here. So these two work ports right here one of them, this one right here, is actually connected directly to this port right here, which acts on the major surface area. So this port on the end right here, right there, would be the extend. This one here, on the other hand, comes through, and it's just barely seeable. And I wonder if we could get a view. you'll see the seal peck going through that hole right here. And so what that means is that this retraction side actually sends its oil through this port, through this small hole, around the sleeve, comes down all the way to here, then comes in through this hole to be able to send the oil back onto the annular surface area. And so we'd send oil either in to extend, to push this piston out, or send oil in through the same end around this outer sleeve in this port right here, act on the annular surface area and retract it. Now the reason why this is commonly used in our steering is so that we can have the hydraulic hoses mounted inboard on the axle while the outer end here has the tie rod end and so then that tie rod end would be extended to the steering knuckle and is mounted outboard by the tire. And so what we're giving the area around the tire is, well, the simplest end of the cylinder rather than the end with the hoses that a lot of the rocks, the dirt, the debris could actually break off. So what we do see is that both ends of this cylinder are adjustable and serviceable. So you'd be able to take off the ball stud if it was damaged and keep using the cylinder. And on the other end here, we see that the rod is threaded to allow the other tie rod end. And still we have a uh, lip seal that's going to prevent any dirt and debris from coming in there. And that's going to prevent that ingress contamination. Otherwise, we see a high pressure steel rings being used as our pressure seals on the piston. These steel rings could also be lip seals faced in opposite directions so that it's double acting or you could see an o-ring and a backing ring another o-ring and a backing ring and you would make sure that the pressure as it comes it against it pushes the o-ring into the backing ring so that would be how you'd install that 